So when I was in Cleveland visiting my parents, I decided to go to the Asian uh, foods market. And one thing that I like to do at the beginning of every season is stop by the Asian grocery store and get a couple of different plants. One is a plant called Ing Chai, which is also, I think, called the hollow heart. That's what I was told by a Taiwanese man that uh, I used to garden with. And uh, he taught me about this plant. And the great thing about this, it's like a water, water loving plant. It's like an uh, arrow leaf um, water loving plant. The great thing about it is that you can uh, get greens off of it, like stir fry greens and salad greens in the middle of the heat of summer. Um, and so it's a great, great thing to plant at a time of year and get an abundant harvest off of something at a time of year when greens are pretty minimal from the garden, at least in these temperate regions. And uh, so I've started some of that going inside and I'll show you a video of that. But um, another thing that I get, uh, I'm sure to buy at the Asian grocery is these, uh, this lemongrass. And this just came in a bundle like this and each one of these can potentially start a new, an entirely new clump of lemongrass. So I buy these and I make sure that they have these nodes on the bottom of them. Sometimes they'll cut them off pretty high up and you end up with just these sheaves of grass and there's no nodes in there. This is where your roots are gonna come from. And this plant is super easy to plant. I learned this from Hmong gardeners in Madison, Wisconsin, who would get these um, every year at the Asian market as well. Plant them first thing in the, sp in the spring, uh, you know, after danger of frost, because this is a tropical plant. And you just basically just stick these in the ground and they will root themselves. And by the end of the season, you'll have a huge cluster clump of, uh, of lemongrass. So you can harvest, you can dry it down and use it throughout the winter, or you can just harvest it directly and it makes a great tea. It's good in tom yum soup and some other uh, Thai dishes. It's usually one of the ingredients in curries. It's ground up in curries, uh, like Thai curries. So um, I love it. I don't often make as much use of it as I would like to. I end up with a lot of it in the, uh, in the fall, and then I don't end up using it uh, as much as I would like to. And usually what I'll do even in the fall is uh, I'll take a clump of it out of the ground and I'll put it in a pot and I'll keep it throughout the winter and then you don't have to make it to the Asian grocery store you can just keep on going uh, keep it going through the winter and it will survive with minimal sun then by the time spring rolls around you plant that clump in the ground and you can have a new clump of lemongrass and it'll even uh, happen faster than this will root so you'll get a better harvest so this is pretty simple I had a bunch of uh, bindweed in here, which has been kind of creeping in over the years, trying to get rid of it. But you don't really even have to work up the soil that much. You just have to loosen it enough that you can stick this down in there. And you're going to want to give it some space. But that's pretty much all you need to do. Like that. And then... I would plant one maybe over here and, uh, and obviously the ones with the thicker stems are going to be more likely to survive because they got more energy in them. Um, that's pretty much it. It doesn't seem like it should grow, but, uh, but it does. This will, uh, before too long, it'll send up another shoot either out of the middle of this or a side shoot. And then it'll just start sending out more and more side shoots. And over here is where the lemongrass that I planted and started earlier is going. And that's taken pretty good hold. It's taking a little while to get established just because it's been so dry. And I keep on having to water. So this is what those lemongrass cuttings that I planted earlier in the season look like now. This one I thought was dead, and then it sent out a shoot. This one's looking pretty sad right now. I don't know if it got some rot in it, but I think because of all the dry weather that we were having for a while there, it was like a month and a half without much rain. 
I was still trying to water these, but it might not have been enough. It's kind of hard to see this, but <laughs> this started out as a cutting that I had rooted of ing chai, but a rabbit is getting into my garden, and even though it's probably never seen this plant before, it somehow figured out that it's edible and is just devouring it, comes back to it and makes sure that it doesn't isn't able to do anything. I planted some of this down by the cattail pond behind my house and I might go down and check that out and see what it's doing. It's pretty hard to see it, but this is the ing chai here. I was hoping if I planted it right here by the water it would take off, but it seems seems like the rabbits are finding it wherever it ends up. Because this definitely looks like it's being eaten. And here's another one right here. We'll see. I was expecting these to be really, you know, just going crazy at this point. But I think what I might have to do is scythe around here. Because this grass is probably shading it out. You can tell from the size of the corn that it's uh, late July. And this is our lemongrass. Uh... Some of it's done better than others. This clump is pretty good. The other day I harvested some of this clump. These ones are not doing as well, but all of them took. All four of the little cuttings that I put in the ground took. And this one's definitely headed to be a big cluster by the end of the season. Definitely already harvestable now. It's super easy to just take those cuttings from uh, the Asian grocery store and get them started here by plopping them in the ground. Unfortunately, my experiment with the ing chai has not been incredibly successful because of rabbits continuing to get in the garden. This one's, you can see, didn't really do much at all. And there was another one over here. Oh yeah, it's right here, but it's looking path pretty pathetic at this point. But this is pretty much how it grows. This will just send out side shoots and it'll grow like sweet potato vines. Sweet potato vines are actually another option because they have edible leaves. And there are some varieties that you can get at Asian grocery stores and, uh, and propagate, and they're specifically uh, selected for their leaves, for eating the leaves. They're a lot like ing chai in that they grow. Well, the only difference is ing chai needs a lot of water. Sweet potato vines can grow in minimal uh, and drought conditions. So I'd recommend trying out these couple of different crops that you can get easily from the Asian grocery store and uh, try them in your garden. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet and give the video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And I'll see you next time.